I'm going to read this one. It's from Hebrews 12. It says, so be made strong, moms. I'm just going to make it applicable to you today. Even in your weakness, by lifting up your tired hands in prayer and worship. So many times today in these different uh, testimonies we heard, people were in a battle and they were getting battle fatigued. And even though their hands were tired, they prayed. They lifted up tired hands and they prayed. Strengthen your weak knees. For as you keep walking forward on God's paths, all your stumbling ways will be divinely healed. In every relationship, be swift to choose peace over competition. And run swiftly towards holiness. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Watch over each other to make sure that no one misses the revelation of God's grace. Really good advice for all of us. I'm trying to apply it to moms today. When you feel like you're at the end of your rope and you've just given as much grace as you can, he says, watch over each other to make sure that no one misses the revelation of God's grace. And then from Romans chapter 8, I was, in a, uh, I was with a group of friends this week and I was teaching from this particular portion and I wanted to expand on it a little bit today. It's from Romans 8, 26. It says, the spirit comes alongside and helps us in our weakness. We don't know what to pray for as we ought to, but come on, that same spirit does what? Pleads on our behalf with groanings too deep for words. And the searcher of the hearts, that's another name for God. The searcher of the hearts knows what the spirit is thinking because the spirit pleads for God's people according to God's will. I became a Christian because of my mom's prayers. And I know she was pleading on my behalf. And her brother uh, was a pastor at the time before I became a Christian. And my mom had become a Christian, but she was still waiting for me you know, to see the light. And he said to her this advice. He said, you know what, Mary, her name's Mary. And she said, he said, you need to picture your son in church with his hands lifted up and praising the Lord. And that seemed like an impossible thing. At that time, I was a bouncer on the strip in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> You know, I was in the darkest place you could find. My cousin actually came down to visit me, and my mother said, well, let me go. I want to see where he works. And he's like, no, you don't want to see where he works. <laughs> so it was really about as dark as you can get. And in the midst of that, you know, then she would say after I became a Christian and I was a pastor, she says, not only do I see you in church with your hands lifted, you're leading worship and helping other people lift their hands. You know, it's just good to live in that place of the dream, exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or imagine. And what would the devil love to do is just get you not to pray. So lift up those tired and, and those weak hands. Because you're not doing this on your own. There's a searcher of the hearts called God the Father. And there's a spirit that's part of him that's on the inside of you. And when you're not sure what to say, he speaks out on your behalf with groanings, it says right here, that are too deep for words. The searcher of the hearts knows what the spirit is thinking. Because the Spirit pleads for God's people according to God's will, including your children that you're praying for. And I know mom's prayers for their children are very intense, as it should be. It's the way God designed us. We know, in fact, that God works all things together for good to those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. See, that's another one of those hatchets coming out of your mouth towards the devil. God works all things together for good. Even though my son is a bouncer in a, on, a, on the... On the strip, it wasn't a strip club bar, if I said that wrong. It was on the strip in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> it was a new, a new wave bar. I don't know if you know what that even means, but they had a mosh pit. Anybody know? This is the craziest thing ever. People would get up on the stage and jump into the crowd, and they would all fight each other, and they called that dancing. And I'm the bouncer in a place like this where they come to fight. Like, what a stupid knucklehead I was. And... Uh, one time I had to throw a guy off the stage and I ripped his jacket. And he's like getting mad at me for ripping his jacket. I'm like, dude, you're coming here to fight. Like, this is part of the deal. Your jacket's going to rip. Like, Don't get on my case. Like, go to a different club. <laughs> anyway, I was in a dark, really dark place, not just for that reason. And the prayers of my mother, and I'm sure there were many times she was so frustrated with me that the spirit kicks in. It's like a circuit breaker goes off on the inside of you and you're out of energy and all of a sudden the spirit of God just jumps in and speaks out on your behalf and God can hear him. And I just love this picture in the commentary of this particular uh, author. He said the word searcher comes from a root which suggests someone lighting a torch 
and going slowly around a large dark room. That's the searcher of the hearts. It's God lighting a torch and saying, I'm going to plunge in to where you are in that darkness, and I'm going to bring, you can even think of a lantern. He's going to be swinging a lantern to bring light to your dark place where you are. Whether you're the one being prayed for or you're the one praying, he's coming after you, right? Like he leaves the 99. He's coming into that large dark room full of all sorts of things, looking for someone in particular. Or perhaps he or she is searching in the dark by listening, that person who's looking for you. They're coming out looking for you, and they're, they're going to listen to see if they hear your voice. What is it that he or she is wanting to find, and what happens when he finds it? No doubt God, in searching the dark spaces of our hearts, comes across all sorts of things which we would just as soon remain hidden. But the thing he is wanting to find above all else and which, according to Paul, he ought to find in all Christian, Christians is the sound of the Spirit's groaning. <laughs> that really helped me. I have to say, it really helped me to know it's the song Reckless Love that I just was quoting, right? He leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Hmm, but he still gives himself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. He lights that torch and plunges into the darkest places. And if you run out of gas, Mom, he's not leaving you just because you ran out of gas. His spirit's on the inside pleading with you on your behalf. We could use it for any prayer, but especially for your children. He's there with you. His spirit is on the inside, and they connect like, like two wires being connected to a battery that that causes the electrical current to flow. Amen? So I had a lot more today, but I'm only going to go a couple more and we'll be done. Romans 8.18 says, The sufferings we go through in the present time are not worth putting in the scale alongside the glory that is going to be revealed, say it, for us. Huh. There's going to be glory revealed for us. 22. We know that the entire creation is groaning together and going through what, ladies? Labor pains together up until the present time. So God knows what it's like to have labor pains. Hmm. The whole creation. This is the female part of Holy Spirit. You all know that that's a, a real thing, right? That God said, let us make man in our image, male and female. There's a female side to the Trinity too. I'm not saying it's 100%. I don't want to get off on some tangent there. But just recognize the aspect of the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit is very feminine. And he knows what it's like to give birth. The whole entire creation is groaning together and going through labor pain to see the thing come to pass that we're all wanting to see, which is for our children, obedience to the Lord. Not only so, verse 23, we too who have the first fruits of the Spirit's life within us are groaning within ourselves as we eagerly await our adoption. The redemption of our body. Lots I could teach on here, but I'm going to keep going. We were saved, you see, in hope. But hope isn't hope if you can see it. Who hopes for what they can see? But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait, it, wait for it eagerly and patiently. And that's always a challenge, isn't it? And this is a little unpacking of Romans 8.18. The glory that is going to be revealed, I'm sorry, unveiled for us, right? I, I emphasize that. It's not going to be revealed in us or to us. It's going to be revealed for us. When you see your son lifting his hands, worshiping God after being a bouncer in a nightclub, that's glory that's being revealed for you. Like That's no other explanation for it. When Dan gets up in the morning, he had to take a week off of work for that shoulder injury. And we're like, wait a minute. God's not going to uh, allow this to, keep t to continue. We're not letting the devil steal from you and take money out of your pocket if you're not getting paid while you're working. We're praying for that shoulder. You're getting healed. You serve a God who heals. And then he's getting up, and he doesn't even realize he puts his T-shirt on and he's going through. Like, wait a minute. I couldn't do that. And now all of a sudden you can do it. And like, boom. See how he threw his arm up? Just to say, you know what? Another black eye for the devil. Another black eye for the devil. Not going to win, devil. So this says, Note, it says unveiled for us, not in us, and not to us, as though we're going to go to some be, uh, be spectators of glory like people watching a fireworks display. Remember what it said? In another version, it says, these light and momentary afflictions don't compare to the glory that's going to be revealed for us. 